Welcome to The Rest is Football with me, Gary Lineker, alongside Alan Shearer and Micah Richards. And with the Premier League kicking off tonight, it's time for our season predictions. On today's episode, we're going to go through all 20 Premier League teams to look at what they've been up to this summer and how we think they're going to get on this year. Let's get started because uh, 20 teams, it's going to take uh, quite a while to get through. We wanted to talk about all the clubs on this podcast, not just focus on, obviously, the top few. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to get them into categories. We're going to go through each team in alphabetical order. And uh, I want us all to decide whether we're, they'll be the champions in the top four, uh, Europe, mid-table, in a relegation fight or relegated. And uh, Alan, Micah, it's time to lay your cards on the table. And we're going to start with, you might think Arsenal or even Aston Villa, but no, it's Bournemouth because it's AFC Bournemouth. So therefore, (laughs) there you go. (laughs) Yes, Um, we're we're, we're trying to do things right. Um, Bournemouth's an interesting one, isn't it? Because a lot of people tip them to go down last season. Uh, they managed to stay up. Gary O'Neill did a, a fabulous job when he came in for Scott yep. Parker. Um, and then, slightly bewildering perhaps, they let him go at the end of the season. And um, we've now got Andoni Iraola, who's come in. Uh, what do we make of that decision? I thought it was very, very harsh. Um, after the job he did, I thought it was a miracle that he, uh, that he kept them up. I mean, the way Scott Parker left, basically got himself sacked. After that terrible result at uh, at Anfield, wasn't it? But then, yeah, I, I thought Gary did a great job, and I, I, without doubt, he deserves to be uh, given the opportunity at least to do the same again. So for him to not even not even make it to uh, to pre season was was very harsh. So um, I mean, you don't make any friends by doing that, but I don't suppose the owners want to make friends; they want to get results, and they're entitled to make that decision. Um, but I think it'll be another tough, long, hard season for Bournemouth and I see them in a relegation battle again. OK, and Donny Iraola, uh, Mike, has been described as uh, uh, the rock and roll of football. <laughs> we'll take that, though, won't we? You know, we... Uh, sometimes well, can you do that with, with the players, perhaps, that Bournemouth have got? No, but us as broadcasters, I think it'll be really entertaining. I think that's what we want to see. We want to see a little bit of, of flavour, a little bit of sauce within the league. But if I'm being totally honest, I agree with Alan. Um, there was, I won't say stupid to get rid of O'Neill, but it just got him to a place of stability where he could build on that and then the get rid of that. So I think Bournemouth are going down. Sorry, going Bournemouth down. fans. I'm, I think they're going down. I'm going to go with you on that one, um, Micah. Um, I think that, I think they might go down. Um, I was disappointed to let Gary O'Neill go. I thought he did a terrific job. Um, I think he'll, he'll definitely um, get another job. And we might come to that a little bit later, right at the end of uh, this podcast. Uh, let's move on um, to Arsenal. Um, we we kind of covered a little bit in the first podcast that we did, didn't we? Um, where we thought who would win the title race. And I said, I thought Arsenal would win it. Um, Jesus is subsequently injured, but I'm going to stick with my, uh, my prediction at that point. Um, I mean, if they can improve one position from last season... Um, They'll do well. <laughs> no, I, 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 I agree. I think they will challenge. I, I think it's going to be top, you know, we're, we're saying top four, but I think it'd be top two. I, I, I just think with Arsenal. Psychologically, got, how important was it to win the Community Shield? Massive, massive for, for them and the fans to, to believe because, you know, they, they know they can beat Man City. I mean, if Foden takes that chance when he goes through made it a great stage from Ransdale, wasn't it? Um, but I just think with with Man City, who they can apply on, on the pitch or bring on at any time and the 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 quality they can bring with with Arsenal, where Jesus got injured, they be just came a, a a different team. There wasn't as potent in front of goal. Of, of course, last season with Saliba getting injured was was massive for them. They brought in... Nketiah on- had a good run at it, didn't he, for a little while? Yes, he had an amazing run. Really good young player. I think he's got a, a really good future ahead of him. Can Havertz players a nine? Alan? Um, 
Uh, well, he can, but I'm not sure he can do the job that they that they would want. I mean, they've already got a problem with Jesus, haven't they? So, um, in terms of in terms of injuries, yeah, I, I I would have them. I would have them in second position. Me, I just think that the quality that City have, um, I would just expect City to uh, to do the same again. They may have a slow start. They may have a little bit of a hangover, but they've proved that they can recover from that. But I do see Arsenal. Pushing City all the way again because I've been impressed with uh, with their signings. Um, so I mean they've they've spent an absolute fortune. Two hundred million. Back the manager absolutely. So and you're not spending that to finish second again. You can tell what they want and their intentions. They want to go out and they're going to want to go one better. But I just think with City's quality, I'm I'm going to go with City again. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to stick with Arsenal. Um, I think Rice would make a real difference. I thought mm-hmm. he had a terrific game in the Community Shield, as did um, Timber as well. Mm-hmm. There was their other signing, of course. Uh, let's move on to um, Aston Villa. They had a brilliant season, didn't they, uh, last year? They finished seventh. Um, but, of course, they've got to cope with that busy um, European uh, schedule now because they're in the um, conference um, this season, the European Conference League. So um, how will they do? He did a great job, Emery, didn't he? Well, he's the man that knows how to navigate Europe, that's yeah, for sure, as he's, well. Um, and he's a very clever coach, um, and by all accounts, they uh, they, they love him at uh, at Villa. Um, made some made some clever signings as well, I think. Uh, so yeah, I would I would th- not so much as a surprise package because everyone s- sort of saw them and and what they did last season. But um, I've got them. Uh, I've got them challenging certainly to go better than they did last year in a top six. Okay, Micah, they made some interesting signings. Pau Torres um, in particular. Um, Yuri Tielemans got on a free. That's good, a, a good sign and I've watched him play for years for, for Leicester, of course. And someone called uh, Rico Richards. I thought, was, I thought I read Micah Richards uh, f- f- for a minute for a free from, from West Bromwich Albion. Um, can they improve on what they did last season? It's a, it's a big ask to do that. No, I think they'll be there or thereabouts where they were. I think the extra games will be difficult, but I want to talk specifically about Pau Torres. He is uh, got all the ability to be a world class centre half. He's he's left footed. I uh, watched him a lot in the, in the Champions League. He mm. played against Man United in Europa League, um, and he's just. The way he reads the game at Villarreal and the way he comes out with the ball, he's, he, his technique for a centre-half, for a modern-day player, is exactly what he is. Um, it might take him a little bit of time to adjust to the physicality of the Premier League, but once he does that, and the competition with, with, with Mings as well, I think he's going to be one of the signings of the season. And Diaby as well. Diaby's a good player as well. He, uh, he he might score a few. So where have you got them, Micah? What's your? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say seventh, eighth, similar to last season, fighting for so Europe, for, for Europe, Europe. Europe, Europe. Yeah, I'm going to go Europe as well. Um, I think uh, for Aston Villa, I think they'll um, do well. I really like Unai Emery. I think he's yep. a terrific coach. Um, and talking of um, terrific coaches, let's move on to to Brentford. Um, what a season they had last year. Uh, didn't they uh, in in ninth place there and good manager? Yeah, good manager, clever, uh, clever manager, and that that stadium is bouncing, which obviously helps them. But uh, what what is going to be a huge miss for them is uh, is is Tony um, with his uh, with his suspension. Um, they finished last season in ninth, which, as you said, was remarkable. Uh, I don't have them doing uh, so well this year. Um, so, but but again, I think they'll be in and around mid table, which for Brentford, I think they would be more than happy with, wouldn't they? To spend a few quid, they brought mm-hmm. Nathan Collins in from Wolves for twenty three yeah. million. Um, Mark Flecken from Freiburg for eleven million. Kevin Shard from Freiburg as well, twenty million for him. And interestingly. On an undisclosed free from Inter Miami, one Romeo Beckham. <laughs> if he's half as good as his dad, that'll be a signing. He's good mates with uh, Paul Dickoff's uh, lad, and uh, I spoke to Paul Dickoff's lad, who's at Brentford, and he said he's the nicest, most humble, hardworking person he's he's come across. So to have them values when your dad's David Beckham, I really want him to to do well. Exactly that. 
Um, so I really hope he does well. But I would be at the same, Alan, as as you, Gary, t- mid mid table. I don't think they will do any better than that. It's that would be good though, wouldn't yeah, it? Absolutely. it? It'd be it'd be great. But you're missing you're missing Tony. I only have him like mid table just because I believe what the manager is saying and the message and the style of play which is implemented. So I will say yeah, mid table. Great season for for Brentwood and Bermo's got to step up this this year. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the same uh, mid table because of Frank. I think he's he's excellent. It's a well run club as well. Um, as is Brighton, mm. another team. We've got the you know three clubs on the bounce there, haven't we? That um, um, Aston Villa, Brentford, and now Brighton that all performed brilliantly and probably with the three surprise packages of last season that they finished sixth. They've got European uh, football and uh, they played some. Beautiful stuff last season, didn't they? Outstanding. Um, they're just, again, another modern day team. Because when you go watch, when I went to Italy to play and you watch all the teams, they, have, they play the same way, but they've just got better players. The same when you go to, to Spain as well. Whereas when you come to the Premier League, you have to be a little bit different. And they've managed to play great football, really get good recruitment in, and then managed to to find gems while still playing at the same level. Lewis Dunk, absolute legend at at, at that club. He was... Keeping um, Moises Caicedo will be very important for them if they can. I mean, they've lost McAllister already. Um, That'd be really tough for them to cope with, wouldn't it, Alan? Yeah, um, I'd be surprised if he was still a Brighton player come the end of the uh, Mm. the transfer window, I think, with, with who's chasing him. Uh, I know they'll be tough negotiators, but I think in the end they'll get what they want. Um, so for that for that reason, I uh, I mean six they were last year, I think, and I I don't see them I don't see them getting into that position again, particularly with losing, uh, as you said, McAllister and and possibly him. Um, so I've got them in and around mid table. I'm hearing of a young lad called Simon Agingra. He's 18 year old Ivorian uh, who's had a brilliant pre season apparently. Um, I'm hearing he's a bit tasty. Looking forward to seeing him on match of the day. Yeah, and scored a couple of goals in uh, in pre-season. Uh, only young though. It's a big ask for someone that that uh, that age to come in and do so well in the uh, in in the Premier League. Um, but yeah, I'll, they'll they'll be safe again. I expect them to play that great football and and passing out from the from the uh, from the back. Uh, I've seen a couple of clips in in pre season. I mean, one where the uh, where they played Newcastle was just uh, unbelievable. You were um, watching the Newcastle game, were you? Huh? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, doing yeah. my homework. Just before we go on, Jao Pedro. Remember, I said it here first. We obviously people know about him because he was at Watford, but. He's only young. I thought he was a lot older than he was. He'll be outstanding for, for Brighton this year. Brighton's recruitment has been brilliant in recent seasons as well. So um, I'm going to go with them in a mid-table position. Alan? Uh, yeah, I'm going to have them mid-table. I think they'll find it difficult, in uh, particularly in Europe, uh, with the yep. number of players that they'll have to use. So yeah, I've got them in comfortably in mid-table. Same. Same. I echo okay. that mid-table. Right, it's the turn of Burnley. Um, it's very interesting, isn't it, with Vincent Company that he actually started pre-season um, two or three weeks earlier than all the other clubs. He brought them in. Um, does that surprise you, knowing him, Micah? No, it doesn't surprise me. That's exactly what what he's like. I remember when I was his assistant uh, captain and I had to take care of all the fines and everything. And if a fines one on his desk by the end of the day, he'd give me a fine. He's that sort of person. <laughs> when, when, when he's in it, he's Find in the it. finer. Find the finer. <laughs> but I just think Burnley will compete because of the style he's, he's been able to implement so soon. And I'm just intrigued to see how the style in the championship and how good, you know, of course, they were champions. If he could do that in the Premier League, I believe he can do it, but he just needs to show everybody now. And I think they will do that. I, I tell you, I'm looking forward to seeing, um, which is quite unusual. We've mentioned a few of them actually in this podcast, goalkeepers, um, but they've um, signed uh, James Trafford, haven't they, from Manchester City for 19 million. And, and he was obviously one of the big stars of um, the England under-21 winning team. Um, 
this summer. Um, didn't concede a goal. He made that uh, fantastic uh, penalty save right at the death. So it, it'd be interesting to see how um, he fares. Yeah, it's always, I mean, it's, it's a, as we know, a really, really tough position at, at, at any age, but for a, uh, for a youngster going in there, um, and he's going to be tested because at times they're going to be under pressure this season. A lot of the times they're going to be under pressure. So, yeah, it's um, it's a big season for him and they've paid a lot of money for him. Um, so they're expecting big things from So you're right, yeah, we'll look forward to see how he does. Just one thing, his interview after he saved the penalty, he said... <laughs> He knew he was going to save it. It was just so blasé by Sam. I just love that confidence. I just love it. Yeah, it was, it was terrific. I'm going to go for um, Burnley to fight relegation, but stay up. What about you two? Yeah, me, me the same. I think um, I think they'll have enough to stay up. Um, when I look at round who are uh, who are going to be in the relegation battle, I think they'll uh, they'll have they'll have too much, and it'll be tough for them at times this season, and they'll be under pressure a lot of times but they'll have enough to stay up, in my opinion. I'm going to go mid-table. I'm I knew you would. <laughs> you don't upset Vincent, do you? Look oh. at him looking after his mate. Look <laughs> at him. <laughs> I want to get in the players' lounge and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you're in the programme on Friday night, that's what you've said, isn't it? Yeah, he's going he's at the ground. Everyone's going to go, oh, Micah, thank you so much. Why do you we go the full you, hog Micah. and say European football? No, oh, no, no. Let's hey. not push it now, Gary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think probably one of the most difficult clubs to predict this season uh, will be Chelsea. But I think surely we can safely say they will be higher than last season's incredibly low 12th position. <laughs> yeah, they'll definitely be better than 12th. Um, I mean, it was pretty embarrassing what happened with Chelsea last year, I think, in terms of... Why do you think it did? What went wrong? Was it was it the um, managerial errors? Was it ownership, buying too many players? What was it? You've got to try and give your coach the best opportunity possible and I just don't think the owners did that I thought they made it very difficult not impossible but very very difficult um, with the number of players they brought in how, how on earth as a manager can you keep that many players happy um, it's it was uh, yeah almost impossible for them so um, 12th position it was but they're gonna they're gonna they'll improve on that I think they've it's a great sign in getting Pochettino very clever manager, coach. Um, they've made some decent signings and there's still a couple of weeks to go and I'm sure they'll sign a couple more to give them the best opportunity. I know Nkunku's going to be out with uh, for a few months with a, with a knee injury, which is really unfortunate, but um, I've got them challenging for Europe again. I don't see them getting into the top four, uh, but I do think they'll challenge for Europe again and they have to with the money that they spend. I, I just don't know. I, I just don't know, Al. I, you think about when you was a manager at... New Newcastle and if you would have been given a ray of talent you would have picked the best out of that talent and not and still gone down <laughs> 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 so when you say owner he, as a manager owner's dream uh, apart from if the manager the owner saying you must play this player but if he's just bringing in talent for you to, to pick your best 11 or best squad with. Surely as a manager, that's what you, you want. I think too many excuses was aimed at the ownership of Chelsea last season, but I think they'll do a lot better. New, I agree with Alan in terms of the manager. I really rate him. We worked with him. So I'm going to say just missing out on top four, but going for, for Europa League. Yeah, it's interesting the amount of players that, that were actually gone. Mount, Kovacic, Loftus-Cheek, Pulisic, Mendy, Aubameyang, Azpilicueta, Kante. That's a squad in itself. So um, I think it's going to take probably time, although they've had a good uh, pre-season. Nicholas Jackson's um, been scoring a few goals. Um, good signing, we think, from Villarreal. So I'm going to go with European football, like Alan, but I can't see top four. Okay, Michael, where do you, do you, are they going to do Europe? Champion, are you going Champions League then? Because you sound like you're kind of confident. Just miss out on Champions League. Europa League. Just miss out. Okay, yeah. Europa League it is. Um, right, Crystal Palace, um, interesting one. They're going to have to do without Wilfred Zahar for the first time uh, in an awfully long uh, period. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how um, they do. Yeah, I still think they'll have enough talent and um, they've gone... <laughs> They've gone with with Roy again, um, with uh, with his know how, with uh, his experience. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I they'll have enough. I'm really excited to see uh, to see Franca, who they've they've brought in, um, youngster. 
hopefully if, for Brazil. Um, yeah. Hopefully bring a few goals. and 26 million quid. And did you see, I, I saw that he had a few add-ons, including one that he, he, he'll, he'll get 5 million quid extra if he get wins the Ballon d'Or. And I thought to myself, if he wins the Ballon d'Or playing for Crystal <laughs> Palace, I mean, Steve Parrish needs to dig a bit deeper than that, surely. <laughs> Um, Ez, we'll be looking forward to seeing Eze again. He really shone last season, didn't he? Eze and Elise, yeah. Um, if they can keep hold of him, I know there's there's been there's been interest. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't see them battling relegation. I don't see them challenging for Europe. I see them mid table. Yeah, Roy Hodgson. He's a reliable, safe pair of hands that um, they rely on. <laughs> mid table, Micah, or better or I worse? Think struggle. I think struggle worse. I think Zaha mm. took on so much for that team. Yes, Elise, great young talent. Eze will step up and be the, the main man, but Zaha got him out of the pickle so many times in recent history. So I'm just going to go staying up, but struggling. Struggling to avoid relegation. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Alan, mid-table. Now, the next club I'm a little bit worried about as a former player of, of Everton. Um, they had a really tough time last season. I don't think the fans will be particularly encouraged by what's happened in the summer. Um, I think even Sean Dyche himself has described it as a difficult window. Could be another tough battle. But if there is a man that can keep a side up, then he's, he's done that and he's got lots of experience in doing it. I think Everton will will struggle, but I don't think they will go down. I think they'll avoid relegation purely on the structure of of the team and grinding results out. Um, I know the last couple of seasons have not been pretty, but now you can forget last season. What I am a little bit baffled by is the, their signings. You know, they're bringing Ashley Young, experienced pro. I get that, could play a variety of different positions. But then they've only got Dan Juma, who I think is an excellent signing for them. But they need more. If they're going to stay up and stay up convincingly, they need more. But I just think they'll avoid relegation. Well, they've they've only bought the, got the two players in, and one of them's Ashley Young, and you mentioned Dan Juma. But they've out has gone Sims, Jerry Mina, Tom Davis, Begovic, a bit of experience, and and Andros Townsend, and of course Connor Cody, that experience that he brought. Alan, I mean, you have to worry for them, don't you? Yeah, I'm, I would be very worried if I was an Everton fan. I just, I think it's a it's a football club that looks to be in trouble. Um, and the sooner something can happen in terms of ownership or whatever, I don't know. But I would be really worried if I was an Everton fan with with what they've got at this moment in time. I know they've got Calvert Lewin, but he's got his injury issues. Um, if they can clear that up and 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 keep him fit, then it might be different. But how long have we been saying that for? Abs- absolutely, I don't see that. I don't see that happening. I, I, I'm going to have them safe from relegation only because of their manager and who and what he is and he's been there before and he knows how to navigate. But I see them having a long, hard season and surviving just... I'm going to say the same thing um, purely for emotional reasons, I think, but I I, I do fear the worst in some way. Right, on to uh, Fulham. Another one of last season's, I think, star performance. They punched um, well above the weight that perhaps a lot of people thought they would do. They finished bang and halfway in 10th place and pretty much fancied them doing the same thing again. I mean, it's tough. It seems to be tougher sometimes in the second season. I think there's a lot to sort out there. I mean, it looked as if he was gone, Marco Silva, and then it, it, Mitrovic said he wasn't going to play again. Yeah. Um, and th- those are two big questions, absolutely, aren't Absolutely, yeah. Um, I know they've got Raul Jimenez, so whether they're expecting something to happen and they may think he could replace uh, Mitrovic. But if, if they can um, resolve those issues, then in, the, in and around mid-table again, I think, maybe not as high as 10th, but... Somewhere around there, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth. Yeah, tough to replace someone like uh, Mitrovic, though, isn't it, Micah? Yeah, you can't replace so- Mit- Mitrovic. He's, he's he's too much of an asset to that team. The way they want to play, he know he knows the club. He had something to prove. Everyone called him a championship striker. He surely can do it on the Premier League. But I think 
Jimenez is a masterstroke signing. Get him for, for little money. Everyone thinks best years are behind him with that horrendous injury that he had on, on his head. I just believe this is a massive comeback season for him. And even if Mitrovic was to leave, I think Jimenez can do the business. On to Liverpool. Um, had a bad season, really, by their standards, uh, didn't they? But certainly under Jurgen Klopp. Um, but they started to show um, a sign of form and a bit more encouragement towards the end of the season. They've kind of big of a shift, in, certainly in midfield area, haven't they? Yeah, it, they've. Um, I mean, they had to because of the players that they've uh, that they've lost, um, and they lose the the influential voice of Henderson in there and his character. I know he maybe not has played as much as he wanted to, but he's still in the dressing room and still a great character. So losing that, but they've um, the, the signings that they've made. Um, I, I still have one or two issues defensively uh, with them, but I'd, I see them being better than they were last season. I see them being better than in uh, in fifth position. And I've got them qualifying for the Champions League. Yeah, I, I'm the same. I've got them in the Champions League um, qualification this season. Uh, I think I think they could push quite closely towards the title. Um, obviously, they've lost a few players, but the interesting thing we're talking about midfield is is the emergence of Trent Alexander Arnold in that midfield kind of converted position. Um, I, I've been crying for him to play in midfield for years because I, I I think he's the best passer of the football in the English game. Do you expect him to continue that role, Micah? Yeah, I, I, I do. I think it helps them out um, defensively as well so when you're sort of putting your team and have a structure and the way he was sort of getting in positions as a right back it almost felt like he's always chasing the game or chasing his opponent but when he goes into that midfield role the way he plays and the way he presses he can stop attacks from midfield knowing that he's got protection behind and we all know what he can do on the ball I mean Gary you've been saying it for for a while now. I just think he's exceptional and I think he will carry on in that position and it could help Liverpool in that central area, which they've lacked at times. It's been too easy to go from back to front. So I'm excited to see what they can do. Yeah, so have I. I think they'll go quite close and I think I'm going to make a prediction that Darwin Nunes will score a lot of goals this season. He's had a good pre-season as well, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. We'll move on now. Uh, Luton Town. Um, this is a fascinating little story, isn't it? Obviously, they, they've got still some work to do on their ground to get it um, fit for the Premier League. Um, but it's 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 quite a story. Um, small little club, of course. But, they, you know, they've been in the top flight before. In my time, they were actually a pretty good team. Um, they had lots of really, really good players. Um, it's going to be tough, though, surely. Fortunately, Unfortunately, sorry, Luton fans, I've I've got you to go down. Just the experience, I think they're going to be too overwhelmed with the Premier Premier League. They play some good football, but having watching them a couple of the games last season, and especially the playoffs, I think they need a little bit more for Premier League football. I think it's a great story. I'm glad they got here, but I think it's going to be too much for them. I've got them to go down. Yeah, Rob Edwards did a, did a great job um, and getting them where they are and getting them into the Premier League. And you could see the celebrations that they, uh, that they had. Um, <clears throat> but no, I just I don't see them having enough quality um, and I see them being relegated again. They've got a few players in, uh, you know, Ryan Giles from Wolves, uh, Tahiti Chong from Birmingham for four million, um, Anderson from Barnsley. They've, they've kind of gone towards the lower leagues. They have got um, Issa Caboria from Manchester City on loan and, and they spent two and a half million quid on Thomas Kaminsky. Kaminsky. Um, is it going to be enough, Micah? It's, no, it's, it's not, It's is not it? enough. I think, we all, I think we all think they'll go down, but who knows? Yeah, let's hope. Let's hope the dope, but yeah, I think, I think they're going down. Manchester City, they're definitely not going down. <laughs> and um, we've kind of already tipped them. Uh, we made our predictions, didn't we, in the first podcast? And you both went uh, with Manchester City. Um, what can we look forward to most? Um, I mean, they play some exhilarating football. They've just won the treble. They're the obvious favourites for the league. Um, what can we look forward to? What What will Pep invent this year tactically? <laughs> He'll probably put Kovacic up front, won't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's a good signing, isn't he? 
Oh, wow. He was yeah. very excited about Kovacic. And I, 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 I mean, I think he's a really good player, but, you know, he doesn't exactly bang loads of goals in or cr- create too many chances. No, but it, it's different, Gary. I mean, Gundogan was marvellous, <laughs> marvellous, marvellous player. We know what he could do. He was sort of underrated at times, was, was Gundogan. But in terms of Kovacic and what he can bring, the way he can dribble past players, the way he's so effortless, the way he's come into the system and not looked out of place without even proper learning the system, I think he'll score more goals. I think he'll be a joy to watch. I think he's going to have a big season at Manchester City. Can, can Haaland score more goals than what he did? Well, if he scores the same amount, it would be extraordinary, or even a few less. I mean, he, he, who knows in the team that he's, he's playing. I'm kind of a little bit more interested in the, in the other end of, of the team. I mean, Haaland, we know, will score a, a shed load of goals. But Guardiola has signed Bardiol, uh, a player that we, we enjoyed watching, didn't we, during um, the World Cup, although yeah. Messi did turn him inside yeah, out in the, in, in, the, <laughs> in the semi-final. But... Um, I mean, just when you think, oh, maybe they've lost one or two, one or two players have left, they make a signing like that and you go, cool, they're going to be tough to beat again. Yeah, they will be. And um, he's a very good player, despite what Messi did to him. We, we, we saw enough um, in Qatar, didn't we, to, um, to know that he's, um, he's going to be very good for them, a great asset for them, and he's only going to strengthen them. So, yeah, I've got them, uh, I've got them winning the title just ahead of Arsenal. Mm. Yeah, Pep actually thanked... Um, uh, thank Messi for bringing the price down on Guardiola. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was quite amazing. Now I know you both go in Manchester City uh, for the title. Um, I'm going for them in. I'm going to put them in second place. I think, but um, right. um, not with any any confidence. <laughs> hasten to add. Uh, let's move on to the other side um, in Manchester um, Manchester United, and it's been a steady progress under Ten Hag. Do you, do you, do you think they can continue to improve, um, Alan? Uh, in terms of position wise, um, maybe not because I'm going to have them. Oh, I've got them certainly in Champions League again, uh, but I've got them in uh, in fourth position this year rather than where they finished last season in uh, in third. Um, I think they've made some some very good signings, which obviously will improve them. Really looking forward to seeing what uh, Rasmus Hoyland can do. Um, I know he's a youngster; they've paid a lot of money for him. But it's a lot of expectation on on his head and how they're going to play him and and Rashford and the uh, in in that uh, in that team. So um, yeah, I, but, uh, I've, I'm impressed. You can't be anything but be impressed with the what uh, the, the job that Ten Hag's done. Interesting uh, the, uh, the big change, obviously in goal yeah. um, with Anana coming in. He's probably much more comfortable uh, with his feet, and that's important to the way Ten Hag plays, Micah. Yes, and I think that's exactly what they needed. Um, he looks like a really good character as well. I've seen a couple of clips in pre-season where he's really organising the back line. Um, but yeah, he's in the um, Champions League final, watching him up close and personal, he really has got that presence. I was sad to see De Gea go because I thought he was a legend for the club. Did so well for them, but they needed to freshen it up. They got their man... But I'm disappointed with, with with Man United. I expected Man United to go all, all out in terms of bringing in uh, a lot of top quality players. Go out all out for Kane. Go all out for for Osman. Go go out for the best players that are available in the market. And they've, gone they've spent with nearly two hundred million. Out, yeah, but Hoyland's outstanding. He's only young. What is he, 20 years of age? I mean, you can't be hanging that hopes on such a young player. Get Hoyland and another. So I'm disappointed. I just see them similar to last season. I say top four. Top four. Yeah, the four for me. Yeah. I'll put them in the top four as well. I'm really looking forward to seeing Mason Mount play for Manchester United. I think like most of Chelsea's players last season, they underperformed, but there was an obviously obvious reason for that. And I think Mount's an exceptional talent and I look forward um, to seeing him play. And um, I think, yeah, Manchester United top four for me as well. Now then, here we go, Alan. It's reached your team, uh, Newcastle United. Um Made a couple of signings um, in the last um, couple of days as yeah. well, um, which has probably heightened your expectations 
encouraged a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the job Eddie and everyone did last year was amazing. No one saw that in terms of um, getting into Champions League uh, spot. So, but I, I think they'll find it very difficult to do the same again, um, particularly because how others have improved. I know they've spent a few quid. Um, Tonoli, I'm sure, will be very good. And we we, we took Harvey Barnes from your Leicester, um, and he's had yeah. a, a decent start in terms of the preseason games. Livramento, they've spent a lot of money, and I'll be interested to see how or when he, they can get him in the team because. Uh, there's no moving Trippier at this moment in time with the the the. the but Trippier can play both sides, Alan. Yeah, he could do so. That that may be what he's thinking of. Um, and he didn't play a lot last season because he had a, that serious injury, didn't he? Um, but and they have spent a lot of money on him. So, I'd be I'd be surprised if he was to go straight into the into the team. I don't think it'll be for a few months until you see the best of him. But um, I think it'll be a miracle if Newcastle get in the top four again. Really? So I've, yeah, I do. Yeah, as much as I'd love it to happen, I think with Champions League football, with maybe a, a good cup run and maybe nicking one of the cups this year, the FA Cup or the League Cup, I think then if Newcastle were to have a similar season than uh, than than last season, I think it would be a job well done. So I've got them finishing in fifth this year. What about up front, Micah? Uh, can they s- score enough goals? Can they need to keep Callum Wilson fit. Yeah, I, I really like Isak. Um, there was plenty of ty- times last season where he was out on the left-hand side and because he's so comfortable on the ball, they have him out there. But I want to see him as a number nine. He's the lead man. And I think give him that confidence, give him the chances, he will score. Callum Wilson's always going to s- score goals. But I just think... If Newcastle really want to challenge and play the the, the attacking, like f- the flow, the football they play, Isak needs to start. So I'm saying just going to miss out on Champions League. I've got them down as fifth. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to say the same thing. I, th- I think Eddie Howe's outstanding, um, meticulous in his coaching, and I think he'll bring the very best out of them. I think you're in for another exciting season, Alan. You know, and obviously they've got to deal with playing in the Champions League as well. We can. Um, oh, the atmosphere at St James's Park on Champions League. It'll be rocking, Alan. If you win the Champions electric. League, <laughs> you wouldn't mind no. finishing fifth if you win the Champions League. Tell you what, they, they, <laughs> there are not many teams will fancy coming to St James's with the, with the atmosphere that it's going to be. So I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be another really good season for Newcastle, but we might just miss out on top four. Yeah. I'm going Europe as well. Uh, Right, um, Nottingham Forest just survived, didn't they, um, um, last season? And they had so many new players at the start of last season, didn't they? It it almost, um, like a whole complete new squad. Um, And I think um, with good management uh, from Cooper, they they managed to to stay up and they stuck with him, didn't they? Even when they were struggling. And I think think a lot of clubs can perhaps learn from that. If you think you've got someone good in charge, don't just panic as soon as a team does badly. Yeah, they didn't make it easy for him last year, did they? In what they gave him at the beginning of the season, uh, the the number of players for him to have and to mould together. Um, But yeah, I thought he did a fabulous job. It was a really difficult job. But I, I, even with uh, even with what they've what they've brought in, um, I still think it's going to be a long, hard season. And unfortunately, I see uh, I see Forrest as one of the three that that could go. So you've got Forrest in the bottom three, Alan. I have, yeah? yes. Yeah. Oh dear, Micah. They've got they've got too much quality. They've got too much quality to st- well. When I say quality, too many quality players. As long as they keep the squad and there's no more outs before the. Uh, uh, the the, C, the the transfer window is over. Yes, I don't think they're going to pull up trees and go top 10, but I think they've got enough quality to stay in the league. So I've got them um, avoiding relegation. Mm. I'm looking forward to seeing a, a Langer play um, for them. He was at Manchester United. I thought he, he showed a lot of promise. Um, so that'd be interesting. I think they'll stay up. Um, and as a as a as a Leicester fan, I'd love us to swap places with them, <laughs> um, but not really. I think um, I think they'll stay up. Um, a battle against relegation again, but be safe. Um, 
Sheffield United, I'm not sure the same would be true for them. Um, I, the supporters are not not that happy. I saw I actually um, saw some tweets from Matt Fitzpatrick, the US Open champion of, of a year or so ago, who's a big yeah, Sheffield United fan, saying, what on earth is going on at our club? We're just not making enough signings. We're letting players go um, and the club's in a mess. So that doesn't bode well, Alan. No, and even even the manager Paul Heckingbottom is saying the same thing. Still, yep. still, still saying they're way short on numbers and probably quality. Signing, selling one of their best players, if not their best player, and and die. Um, yeah, I, I, I just can't see anything other than them going back down again. I don't know what's going on at uh, at, at Sheffield United in terms of um, that what they what they think they can do with what they've got. So yeah, uh, I've got them. I've got them being relegated. Yeah, I mean, obviously they were in the Premier League two or three years ago. Um, Now they've managed to get themselves back in and it doesn't really look like they're going to get the support to the manager that he's going to need in the top flight. No, they need to be be better within the market, get some top quality players in. But just from a a legend's point of view, um, real leader, captain, letting Billy Sharp go in one of the most important seasons they've had for for a couple of seasons. It seems strange to me because not all captains need to play week in, week out. You have a captain who's going to be great around the dressing room, can integrate the, the young lads, know what it means to play for the club. And I seen an interview of him when he left and he looked very disgruntled. And I just think Going into to, to the Premier League when you're in the Championship, you need all these little things to come together. And the signings at the moment just don't look good enough. So I have them to go down as well. I think that's unanimous, isn't it, Alan? Yeah, it's going to be very, very difficult for them. Um, as I said, he's selling one of their best players. Uh, even, even, yeah, there's, a, there's just... There's no hope really from a lot of their supporters if you're to believe social media. Uh, I've got a couple of friends who are Sheffield United fans as well and they are really, really worried. And even then, even they're saying they've got no chance. Right, let's move on to um, Tottenham Hotspur. And um, last season, obviously very disappointing, finished in eighth place. Despite that, Harry Kane scored loads of goals. Obviously, um, at this point, we're still not entirely sure uh, whether Harry is going to go or not, um, which will make a massive difference either way. Um, they have brought in, um, interestingly, uh, James Madison, who I think is a fabulous signing and an absolute snip at 40 million. I think he's a supremely talented uh, young footballer. Um, how do we think they're going to fare, Micah? I absolutely love the manager, Posta Coglu. Um, I worked with Chris Sutton many times and he banged on about him for years and years and years um, when he was in in the J-League. And then when he got the Celtic job, everyone questioned it. Is he the right person for it? And the the style of football he plays, he's great in interviews. I spoke to Joe Hart and he said, when he he came, Joe Hart said, I just need someone who's going to put their arm around me, give me the confidence. It's exactly that. But he's strict at the same time and he won't, take any nonsense so I think mix all them together with a style of football I think Spurs are going to be entertaining again and I'm looking forward to seeing Madison because I just think he's exceptional and they spent the right few quid at centre half position haven't they Mickey van der Ven um, and a young Argentinian forward Um, yeah Madison's a really good signing if he can link up with Kane then I, I think everything depends on Harry Kane yeah, where, it's really where. hard to predict with with Tottenham, um, isn't it? Because it's so, they're so reliant and dependent uh, on the great man. Yeah, uh, you, look what he did. I mean, he had one of his best seasons ever last season, Harry. I mean, he was brilliant, wasn't he? Um, and he still finished eighth. Uh, and I know where the signings they had, but everything I think depends on depends on whether Harry stays or goes. Go, Harry, go! <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly biased because obviously I, I really like Spurs as I played there for three years. So I'm going to go European football, which in itself is, I don't know, it's, it's not really where I think Tottenham fans think they should be and perhaps shouldn't be as a club. It should be challenging for the Champions League. But it's I think it's going to be a big ask, particularly without uh, a certain Harry Kane. Uh, Michael, where are they going to finish? I'm going Europa League. 
I have them in one of Europa League positions. I think they'll they'll finish in Europe. I'm excited by this fresh Spurs side. Well, you mentioned the Europa League and we can move on to the Europa Conference League. Winners uh, last season, a terrific effort uh, from West Ham. And um, can they move on from there and, and, and perform? Because in the league, they had, had a really tough season, didn't they? And narrowly avoided relegation. Yeah, it was, a, it was a tough season for them in the league. I mean, but that 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 doesn't matter um, when you consider what what they won. Um, you could see what it meant to to David Moyes and to the West Ham fans. Um, yeah, it's been it's been really strange pre season, I think, for West Ham because they must have known for for a while that Declan was going to be leaving, and then for them to to be so slow in the in the transfer market. I know they're after Maguire and McTominay uh, and one or two others. Um, but they've been they've been really really slow, which hasn't been that positive in terms amongst their uh, amongst their fans. Um, yeah, again, I've got them. I, I don't see them mid table. I see them. I don't see them being relegated. I see them having enough for that. Um, I still think they've got work to do in the transfer market. So I've got them uh, in and in and around twelve, thirteen. Mm. They've been rumoured um, with going for Harry Maguire and Scott McTominay, both of course. Um, possibly surplus to requirements at, at Manchester United. That, that They'd be two solid signings, Michael, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think the whole thing with, with Harry Maguire now, it's becoming a little bit boring. I think it's just borderline. Some of the, the stuff you read on, on social media, it's just... It's become uh, a unfair. Meme. That's and what it is, Mike. I think it's unfair. He's a, it's, he's a it, cracking player. It, it, he's a really good on the ball. He's a great pro. What more do you need than 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 that, Gary? Yes, he's made some bad mistakes. Sometimes in your career, the pressure and the level at that moment in time just becomes a little bit too much. And unfortunately, he's made too many mistakes for the top level. But that doesn't mean he's not a good player. So I think if you can get him and McTominay, get his confidence back, I think it'll be sh- very good, shrewd signings. I'm going mid-table for, for West Ham. I think um, they've still got Bowen. He scores lots of goals. I like Fornells as well. They've got some all-around good players. Good manager, David Moyes, um, proven year in, year out. And um, mid-table, everyone? Yeah, in and around mid-table for okay. me, yeah. yeah. Maybe just below, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, agreed. agreed. We move on to our final team and um, Wolverhampton Wanderers. They seem to have a few problems yeah, worrying, worrying times for uh, for Wolves. I mean, once the owners had sent a letter out to the Wolves fans, um, that didn't give them much hope. Uh, and I see them in a relegation battle, Wolves this year. Yes, I, I would. I would have to agree. You know, when you look at Wolves' his team last season, you think oh, some great young talents there, but they, they never really take it up a notch it's almost like you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting for them to do something and they'll play very good for seven 70 minutes then there's no end product I think they've got enough quality to stay in the league but I think they'll be struggling especially with the uncertainty so I I agree with Alan I think they'll avoid relegation but yeah I think it'd be a tough all season I'm not so sure. I think I think they might go down. I think I've got them in my bottom three. Losing Ruben Nevers as well. I mean that that's a, a massive, massive loss. Uh, I think, and I think that could could cost them. And if if the club's in turmoil, that that's a bad place to be starting a Premier League season. Agreed. Um, yeah, it doesn't look pretty there. Uh, problems there. So yeah, difficult season for them. Okay, um, well, we got through all um, 20 teams. I know some of you will like what we said. Some of you won't like what we said, depending on who you support. Don't take it personally. Don't don't take it personally (laughs) ever. And don't forget, we get a lot of things wrong. As one thing football does, it embarrasses you at some point. Um, So those are our predictions. Some will be right, some will be wrong. We'll be back on Monday for another episode, a more normal episode. This was obviously a special a one-off. Uh, we'll be back with the rest is football reflecting on the opening weekend. Before that, uh, I will, of course, be on Match of the Day. And you two, I believe, will be joining me. Can't wait to get started. Here we go again, another season. Looking Finally, forward to Finally, I've made the A-team, guys, eh? Yeah, only because right is on away doing other things. <laughs> <laughs> You make a good sub though, Mike. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, on that note, um, goodbye, everyone. Um, and uh, thank you very much for listening. And thanks for the amazing feedback we've had so far. It really is appreciated. Um, and we're absolutely chuffed.